Hello everybody, this is Caleb. I found this really cool blog talking about using a USB microscope to zero out the XY position at the beginning of a job. And I thought it was really awesome and I decided I had to set this up on my Shape Oco. And so this video is going to be talking about uh, making of the mount for the USB microscope to mount to on my Shape Oco. Uh, I still have a lot of work to go on setting it up within uh, Linux CNC, but I'm really excited where it's went and how it, it turned out. So I hope you enjoy this video. It's not really a how-to or anything like that, but I hope that it's still enjoyable to watch and maybe will make you think about um, doing something cool like this. So. So first off, I'd like to show you off the microscope that I decided to buy. It's basically the same microscope that's in the article, but it's cheaper because it comes with a different mount that's much cheaper. Uh, but that doesn't really matter to me because I didn't really want to use the mount that it came with anyways. I wanted to make my own out of aluminum. Uh, so that's basically irrelevant, and it was a lot cheaper. And if anybody's interested, I'll leave the link in the description below. I knew that I needed to choose a material for the mounting bracket that was really uh, durable and rigid and I decided aluminum would be the best uh, option just because it would be much more durable than uh, Delrin or some other plastic or something like that and I had it available to me. Uh, so basically I chose to use some uh, scrap aluminum that my grandfather had kicking around his shop. I have no idea what uh, alloy it is. All I know from my grandfather is that it was... Uh, some sort of um, aviation grade uh, aluminum that he picked up from his days working at Holly. Basically, this is really nice stuff. It apparently costed that company quite a lot of money to uh, purchase, and this was a piece that came out of the um, tool testing uh, like shop uh, within the factory. That's why it has a couple like uh, threading holes in it. It was they were using it to test the material with some tools and fixtures that they were building to make something. I have no idea, but uh, anyway, so that's basically what happened here is I just used the saw to cut it, you know, to the basic um, shape and dimensions, and then I'm going to toss it on the mill and finish it up. All right, so here we are on the mill, working on the piece that we just cut out. Uh, I could have probably done this on the Shape Oco. It would have took a lot longer for the most part, and I really just didn't want to mess with it. I also had uh, access to this mill, uh, and my grandfather wanted to basically show me some uh, little tips and tricks that, that he picked up over a lifetime of being a machinist, so I kind of took the opportunity to learn from him. So he's actually operating the mill in this shot right here. Before doing this uh, project, I really honestly didn't think about the benefits of a hand-operated mill. Uh, one of the biggest things that I noticed while doing this job uh, was basically the speed in which we could set it up and just do it. Uh, you know, it wasn't a very complex job, but if I was to do this on the Shape Oco, it would have taken, you know, a fairly good amount of work to think about how to set it up in the software and how to get it going and everything. So. Yeah, I, I really have to say there's a, definitely still a uh, time and a place for these manual operated uh, tools still. This is an excellent example of a conventional cut that is followed up by a, a very slight climb cut to give it a nice uh, finish. Right here we're just moving through the material in a conventional manner. And we're taking a lot off, as you can see. And once we get done with the pass, we're just going to ever so slightly move the bit back into the material and then go across it in a climb. And that's just going to give it a better finish. So this is what it looks like right now. You can see that it's just basically uh, got some holes drilled in it and tapped so that it acts as the bolting uh, point for these two screws that hold the clamps in place on the DW660. Haven't made the um, clamp, but I wanted to show what it looked like kind of 
before I have it all done. So that's basically it so far. This area right down here might actually be cut off. And I might make the clamp so it's up here. But for right now I didn't know and we had decided to test uh, uh, tapping this stuff first down here. and So it worked out just fine. And I think what's going to actually happen is this might end up being where the clamp for the camera actually gets mounted. So we'll see in just a couple seconds. Ah, this is embarrassing. So apparently all of my video somehow got destroyed without me saving a backup of it. So this is literally the only thing I have of the making of the clamp portion of this um, mounting bracket. Uh, so that sucks, but anyways, I guess we'll go to the finished product. Well, there it is all mounted up on the machine with the camera mounted in it. And as you can see, it's pretty rigid because when I try shaking around the camera, the whole spindle and everything shakes. So it's definitely locked in there really good, which is, you know, really the intent of making it like this. As you can see, the aluminum is nicely sanded up and shiny and everything so that's kind of cool so I'm pretty happy with it it really turned out really nice um, so yeah the next thing is going to be to basically get it lined up in the X and the Y planes um, that will basically uh, allow me to make sure that it's accurate within a certain amount uh, when I uh, jog the the spindle up and down in the z plane hopefully you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching bye